right, hello everyone. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about section 7.4 in your book. It's called Properties of Logarithms. Uh, there are three simple properties that we're going to examine today. Uh, the first property is called the multiplication property of logs. And it basically says this, if I have a single logarithm where I have two things or factors multiplied inside of that argument of the logarithm, I can actually separate this single log into two different logs. And both of those logs will be added. It'll just be log base b of u plus log base b of v. Notice I just give each factor his own logarithm. Okay, let's take a look at an example of where we can use this to what we call expand a logarithm. If I have a problem that looks like this. All right, if I have a problem that looks like this, I'm, I'm told to expand log base b of 3xy. So basically, if I want to expand this single log into um, multiple logs, well, I take a look at how many different things I have multiplied inside of the argument of this log. I have three different things. I have a 3, an x, and a y. All I do is I expand this single log into multiple logs by giving each factor his own logarithm. And since these three items are being multiplied, when I give each item his own log, they are being added. And that's how we use the multiplication property of logs to expand a single log into multiple logs. Now let's take a look at the division property. And the division property basically it says if I have a single log of two items divided, I can split him up into two logs subtracted, where the top item gets a positive log and the bottom item gets a negative log. Take a look at where we can use this to expand. In this logarithm, I have log base b of 3x over 2y. Notice I have four different items being multiplied and divided. Each one of these will get their own log. So log base b of 3, log base b of x, log base b of 2, and log base b of y. Notice that since the 3 and the x are on the top of the lo original logs argument, they both will have positive logs. The 2 and the y are in the denominator, so they will both get an individual negative log each. And that's how we expand a log where we have division and, and also multiplication. The next property is the power property of logs, where it says if I have an argument with an exponent, I can take that exponent of the argument and just move it to the front of the log and multiply it by the log as if it was a coefficient. So if I have, say, log base b, of x squared, well I can rewrite this as just 2 times the log base b of x. And that's how we uh, use the exponent rule, or the power rule. That the, the, Basically the exponent of the argument just comes to the front of the log. So let's take a look at all three of these uh, properties and how we can use them to expand uh, a single log. Alright, take a look at this. I've got the common log of 2x squared y cubed all over w to the fifth z. I've got one, two, three, four, five different items inside this log, either being multiplied or divided. I will give each of them their own log, so I get log, common log of 2, common log of x squared, common log of y cubed, common log of w to the fifth, and the common log of z. Now, I'm going to assign positives and negatives to this. Uh, the 2 is on the top, so he gets a positive log. The x is on the top, so he gets a positive log. The y, positive log. The w is on the bottom, so he gets a negative logarithm. And the z is on the bottom, so he gets a negative log. Now, uh, I want to make sure none of my arguments can have exponents um, in, in these problems when we're expanding. So anything that has an exponent, that exponent needs to come to the front. Common log of 2 doesn't, uh, doesn't change. But in the next one, I've got 2 common log of x plus 3 common log of y minus 5 common log of w minus common log of z. And I've expanded uh, this uh, to its utmost. Okie dokie, let's do one more problem. Uh, in this case, I've got the natural log of the square root of x times y over the cube root of w times x plus 1, the quantity x plus 1 cubed. I've got four different things. It gets their own natural log. So I'm going to go ln of square root of x, ln of y, ln of cube root of w, 
and then the ln of x plus 1 cubed. Okay, I assign positives and negatives depending on where they were at originally in the natural log. The x and the y are on the top, so they both get positives. The w is on the bottom, so he gets a negative. The x plus 1 is on the bottom, so he gets a negative. Any exponents now need to come to the front. Don't forget that when I have the square root of x, well, that's the same thing as x to the half power. So technically, that half as an exponent can come to the front. So that'll be 1 half ln of x plus the ln of y minus. Well, if the square root is a half power, isn't the cube root the 1 third power? So it becomes minus 1 third ln of w minus the 3 coming to the front, uh, 3 times the ln of the quantity x plus 1. Notice you need the parentheses for that argument to include the x plus 1. And that's how we expand a single log into multiple logs. Well, if I can expand a single log into multiple logs, I should be able to condense multiple logs into a single log. All right, so take a look at this example. I want to condense each of these expressions into a single log. Notice, to condense, you can only write the word log once in your final answer. All right, I've got one, two, three, four different logs that I'm going to condense into a single log. I'm going to try and do this in one fell swoop. I write log base 2. And then if I have any negative logs like I do here and here, I know I'm going to have to have a fraction bar in my argument. So I just go ahead and draw that big gigante fraction bar. And then I start placing the variables or the arguments uh, where they belong in the single argument. All right, since this x is a positive log, he goes on the top. Notice he had a coefficient of 2, so he needs to become x squared, right, by putting the 2 back inside as an exponent. The y is a negative, so he goes to the bottom, and his exponent becomes a cubed. The z is a positive, so that z he needs to go inside, or on, on, in the, on the top of the fraction. But since he has a half power, or since he has a half in the front, how would he go, go back into a power? That's right, it becomes the square root of z. And then lastly, here's a toughie, what about the two-thirds that's in the front? How would I translate that into some type of exponent. That's right, yeah, w would be cube rooted, but then he would also be squared on the inside. So this is what your answer would be if I was to condense multiple logs into a single log. Notice I only, had, I only get to write the word log once. Okay, let's do it one more time, and I've got now the common log of x minus 1 minus the common log of x plus the common log of x plus 1. Again, I've got multiple logs that will be condensed into a single common log here. I have a negative log, so I know I'm going to have a fraction. Let's see, the first uh, log is x minus 1. He's on the top since he's a positive log. The x plus 1 is also positive. He'll go on top. And the only negative log was the x, so he'll become the denominator of this new argument. And so I've condensed this into a single log. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully this isn't too bad for you. We will see you later.